Hello and welcome to Tech Week in View, where each week we take the biggest stories in technology, eat them up, spit them out again and give you our opinions. This week we've got Motorola, we've got Apple, we've got Google, and why the credit crunch is going to be great for bloggers. So while most of us are going through a credit crunch and economic downturn and worrying about our savings, some people actually are hopefully benefiting from it. Who? Well, bloggers. Strange that you might think, but if you're a blogger in the UK and you have a Google AdSense account, that's all those adverts that you see on the web from Google, you might actually benefit from the fact that the pound is struggling against the dollar. Why? Well, last year it was two to one. So every dollar, every two dollars you had, you got a pound. Now, if you're being paid in dollars, means that your money's not going to go as far. Now, with the economic crisis that it is, the pound has weakened against the dollar, and so all of a sudden we're seeing it about around 160. Now, what that means is that if you're paying in dollars, you're going to earn more money when the exchange rate comes across. That might not be enough to pay off the mortgage, but it's certainly going to be enough to perhaps allow you to have that extra pint at the pub. I'll have a beer, please. Caught in some kind of time warp or maybe a Groundhog Day experience, Motorola feels the way to get out of the economic downturn is to release a mobile phone that's going to cost you $2,000. Yes, you heard me right, $2,000. That's like a thousand pounds or maybe about 1,200 at the current exchange rates. Bonkers. I have no idea why they've decided to do it. And it's just a bit crazy. I mean, what do you get that's so special that's going to cost you $2,000? Well. It's designed and taken from inspiration from a watch. Yummy. How? What? Why? What? Why would I want something like that? OK, you get a circular display, but the whole phone looks rather like something they released about 10 years ago, the V70. And that's it. You don't get a personal assistant. You don't get a sexy secretary to come with the phone. It's just a phone. And, you know, you could buy a lot more for £1,000, $2,000, certainly in this economic climate, and I would prefer, I think it would probably be safer, more used to put my money in an Icelandic bank. So this week saw the US release of the Android G1 from Google and T-Mobile. It's the Android platform, remember, that's going to go up against the iPhone, the RIM, Blackberries, and the Microsoft mobiles of this world. The interesting news, though, is that the App Store comes along with it to really challenge Apple and give an offering to Android users so they can download extra applications to make the phone more personal to them. The good news is, is that they're going to all be free to start with, so you won't have to worry about paying for anything or hitting the wrong button. Remember those guys that bought the $1,000 Apple iPhone app just to say, I'm rich. But it does mean that you're unlikely to get any useful apps for the first couple of months until they start accepting paid apps in the store from 2009. What are we going to be left with? Well, it will just be probably silly gimmicks about drinking beer on your phone or just things that are going to waste your time. Fancy a Mac netbook? I thought you did, and hopefully our calls are about to be answered if Steve Jobs, the man himself, has anything to do with it. Although he hasn't given a date, he did hint that the company is working on some very interesting ideas for possibly launching a netbook so you can check your email on a Mac operating system on the go. That was the beginning of the week. The end of the week saw a New York Times blog columnist being contacted by an unnamed search engine which suggested that they've seen activity online from a device from Apple that isn't the iPhone and isn't a MacBook that was launched last week. In fact, it's somewhere with a screen resolution in between. Now, what could this mean? Well, there's a number of opportunities, there's a number of possibilities. One is that it's an iPhone with a higher screen resolution. Now, don't forget, the iPhone doesn't have a good screen resolution as the HTC Diamond, for example, and that would make a relevant sort of progression to sort of just give it a better screen resolution when they announce perhaps an update in January. It could also mean that it's a Hackintosh. Now, Hackintosh is where someone's got taken an MSI or a uh, MSI Wind or an Asus E, for example, and managed to somehow shoehorn the Mac OS system into that so it treats it and runs like a Mac. Either way, what it does mean is that there's some exciting rumours likely to be coming our way, and if it is real, then it does mean that there's a netbook on its way from Apple. Now, we've spoken to a number of Apple employees. They're obviously stum, they don't know anything. However, some of them have admitted that a £400, £500 MacBook would be a fantastic device. I'd certainly want one, and so we'll keep you posted. Mm -hmm. 
It seems the Apple iPhone 3G has been a success after all, selling 6.9 million units globally around the world since its launch in the first quarter. Now, how does this fare? Well, 2.4 million of those were in the US, and that leaves the other 69 countries 63,000 units apiece, which of course is not going to be the way it works, but it gives you a rough estimation of how it's selling around the globe. Compared to others, well, they outperformed RIM. Very exciting for Apple, not so for RIM. However, Robbie Bark, the big cheese over at Microsoft that looks after mobile and entertainment, has said, well, it's understandable that they've done so well. Think of the hype. Think of the, the oomph that they got from that release. And when we come to launching an exciting product, we'll grab some of the market share back. Now, with the BlackBerry Storm, the G1 from T-Mobile, and a plethora of other smartphones available on the market, it'll be interesting to see next quarter's results to see whether Apple really has grasped a chunk of that market or whether it was just early day fluke. Well, that's it for this week. Hope you've enjoyed it. I'm Stuart Miles. This is Megawatt TV. See you soon.